are you looking for everything ins and outs of Castleberry? Well, I'm going to share it all with you. Hey, everybody, Tim Weigel here with Watson Realty. And today I'm going to go over everything from Castleberry that'll help give you an idea so you know if you want to relocate to this community or not. So let's go ahead. Let me share my special PowerPoint for this as we spotlight the city of Castleberry. So again, like I mentioned, Tim Weigel with Watson Realty, and today is our Castleberry Spotlight. So what we'll be reviewing with you is some of the history of the city, the city government, local businesses, city parks and some of the events, the city schools, and of course the city real estate. Um, we're gonna go over everything that you can think of. Uh, some of the stuff in here, we're not gonna be covered at all because believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff going on within the city that makes it a great community for you and I. So let's start out with the history of it. So back in, and there's a long, long history, uh, but we're gonna start in the early 1900s. So Gordon J. Barnett, New York came down and learned the fernery business. Mm -hmm. Who knew that the area was so big in ferns? But when you think about it, it makes sense and opened his own fernery. The ferneries became one of the largest in the world. So, um, for those of you that are familiar with Castleberry, have you heard of Fern Park? In 1926, Hibbert Castleberry relocated to the area. He ended up meeting Gordon and he became his exclusive sales agent for the Fern Park Estates. Now Barnett ended up being elected to the House of Representatives back in 1937. He tried to incorporate the town of Fern Park. Uh, unfortunately, the citizens found out, petitioned against it, and it did not pass. Hibbert convinced the residents of Farm Park, the best way to avoid property taxes was to incorporate their own tax-free town. And that's exactly what they did. So Castleberry was founded to become a tax-free town. Now, October 10th of 1940, the tax-free town of Castleberry was officially incorporated. World War II ended up having a big negative impact on the ferneries. And in the instance, because of all the ferneries shutting down, and being redistributed to help us support World War II. Uh, Casperi pushed Fern Park further out towards State Road 436. Now, Casperi became a city on July 25th, 1965. And then the Casperi citizens eventually voted for property taxes in 1976. So I thought this was kind of cool, knowing that we started out the city of Casperi as being a property tax free, tax free. So, but as time goes on and different stuff started happening, we had to change that. And also another fun fact that can get you on any jeopardy, Castleberry is one of two municipalities in Seminole County, which is the county that we're in, named after someone. So fun fact. Now let's move on into the city government. So with this one, we're basically set up in several ways. So you have elected officials with our city commissioners, Mayor Dave Henson, whose term expires on 2024 and he'll be up for reelection. Uh, Vice Mayor Anthony Armadilla, whose term expires on 2022. We got Commissioner uh, Chad Albritton, whose term expires on 2024. Commissioner Mark Bush, term expires on 2022. And then Commissioner Andrew Meadows, whose term expires in 2022. Um, so these are the commissioners. They are the ones that vote for the different strategic policies within the city. Now, city manager, best way to look at him is he is the CEO of our city. So when they vote on what they need to vote on, Randy Newland, the city manager, is the one who accomplishes getting it done. And then we also have the city of Casperi, the police which that one has Casper Police Chief Krantz overseeing the uh, city of Casper Police Department. So uh, we do not have a fire department that we take care of. Um, that one we feed off of through Seminole County. And then we do have though our own uh, utilities for water. So we do have our own water company. Now, moving on to some of the local businesses uh, and other organizations within the city. So first up, we have the Casper Chamber of Commerce. They're very involved with promoting the local businesses. 
Uh, they do a lot of cool events and uh, luncheons to help networking. Uh, they do women's luncheons. They do their business luncheons, um, have great speakers at them. They also put on different events throughout the year. And through these events, they raise money that they end up investing back into the community, uh, both in uh, food pantries at Casper Elementary School, uh, the art house, uh, we do a scholarship fund. So there's lots of things they do. Uh, we also have the Castleberry Rotary Club, uh, which also helps promote some of the local businesses and does different charities. And then we have a lot of small restaurants and shops mixed with some bigger stores. So we have a nice mix in the city. Now, I'm just gonna name a couple of them. Alex's Fresh Kitchen, Vinzo, Staples. We have several Starbucks within the city of Castleberry because it wouldn't be a real city without a real Starbucks. Is that right? Uh, Einstein Bagels, we have Culver's. And then more importantly, if you like to golf, we also have a golf course, Castleberry Golf Club. Uh, which is one of the only operating golf clubs in the area because a lot of the ones surrounding it have shut down. Of course, it's in great condition. It's got a driving range with lights, so you can actually play in the dark up there and practice your drive. Uh, lots of cool tournaments and events that they actually put on at the Casper Golf Club, too. Now, let's talk about city parks and events. So some of our parks, and this isn't all because we've got a decent amount of green space, we have Lake Concord Park, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Uh, Secret Lake Park, which is the Secret Lake Park. We have a community center there. You can play basketball. They got tennis courts. They got playgrounds. Um, it's really, really cool. And then you have Worst Park, which is a small playground. They got some baseball fields there. Uh, they got a swimming pool. And FYI, if you're a Casper resident, you get a little discount to get in there. Now, events. Uh, the Casper Chamber of Commerce puts on a food and wine festival every year, mm. and that's held at Lake Concord Park. We also do a tree lighting, well, not the chamber, but the city does a tree lighting in December, uh, which is also at Lake Concord Park, which is basically like our city center right behind City Hall. Uh, the Casper uh, government also puts on what's called the Santa Run. Basically, they have four days, five days, depending on their share time, I think it's four, and they drive through with a trailer with Santa waving to all the kids throwing out candy. It's a great event. Uh, they cover pretty much the entire city. It's good family fun and all the kiddies love it. I know my son enjoys it immensely. And then Casper food trucks. So what this is, is it's typically the second Friday of the month. And there's some other days that they do it like on a Saturday too where you can go to Lake Concord Park. Um, a lot of the different local businesses might have a booth up. The chamber has a booth up and they kind of help educate you on what they do. Uh, there's usually some sort of music or band playing at Concord Park. You bring out your picnic blanket, you just sit back, listen to good music, but they have food trucks set up. So you can go get, there's usually four or five different trucks and varies. But you can go get some food, sit down, relax with the family. Just have a nice Friday evening out. You deserve it. You had a hard work week. And that event is completely free. So you get to go to it with your family. Um, and the only thing you have to pay for is your food. Now, some of the public schools that we have in the area that feed out of the city of Calisbury is for elementary school, Sterling Park, Casper Elementary, and Redbug Elementary. Middle School, South Seminole Academy, Tuscaloosa Middle School, which I'm proud to say I went to Sterling Park and Tuscaloosa. And then high school, we have Lake Hall High School, Lyman High School, and Winter Springs High School. So um, the school zone, we're in Seminole County. Seminole County is one of the top school zones in the entire state of Florida. So that's always good. Um, they got a lot of different magnet programs on here that really helps your student develop into what they want. I know Lake Hal, for example, their magnet program for their high school is focused on entrepreneurship. So it's kind of cool to get some of these business skills before you go to college. Now, let's talk a little bit about real estate. And this is just a quick snapshot of the last five years to give you an idea of the flow of the market. Now, keep in mind, 
depending on what community, what house and features of the house, prices are gonna vary, but these are the median homes sales price. Um, and the amount of homes sold, we sold anywhere from 624 in 2020 to 685 in 2021. Um, as a good range, or 686 actually, 2019 was the highest. Um, median sales price as of last year for the entire year of 2021 was $288,000 with the days on market of about eight days. So as you can tell, we're in single digit days on market in the city of Casper because the market is hot, hot, hot. The median sales price last year was 288, uh, creeping up into that 300 range. Now there are some in the area that are definitely well over 300. Um, approach and 400 and even some in the fours, fives. So we have a wide variety when you look at Castleberry real estate, but you have a lot of options to choose from, which is a good thing for you. So and this is basically my quick snapshot of what Castleberry is. So if you're looking to relocate to Castleberry or have any more questions, please let me know. Uh, you can also go to this website, realestateofcastleberry.com. At this website, it'll show you some of the active listings that are currently happening in Castleberry. So you can see what's going on and get a lay of the land. Um, and again, please, please reach out to me if you have any questions on Castleberry. I'd love to be able to help you or point you in the right direction. Um, ways that you connect with Tim, here's my mobile phone number, my email, uh, my website, you can go to www.timvigel.com, and that's the link to my Facebook page. And you can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Um, definitely look forward to hearing from y'all, and I hope that you guys enjoy this uh, video if you're considering on moving over to Castleberry. And then trust me, as someone that has grown up and raised in the area and still travels through Castleberry all the time, uh, if this is a city that you want to make your next destination, your next home, you're not making a bad choice. Thank you all. I'll talk to you all later.